Hey, hey. What's up, what's up? Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Guys, I'm here with Pro Wrestling's King of Monsters, the Rays Savage Sam. Um, thanks for making time for us, you know, to ask ask you questions, which um, guys, if you have any questions, you know, just write them and we will answer them as well. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good, not for nothing. You're looking good. You're looking good. Um, I was waiting for the room to warm up a little bit, but I'm going to just go ahead and start. I know right before, um, how have you been since COVID? Pretty good. Surviving, maintaining. Nothing crazy. I know it's, I know it's affected, you know, indie wrestlers the hardest. And, um, yeah. I know right before then you were facing some medical issues, uh, but you came back uh, officially a week ago, right? Like a week ago? Was your first match back or, or two? Yes, about two weeks ago. In a tag team match at Global Syndicate Wrestling. Correct. Against, against the Colt. Yes. Can you, can you share with us um, what happened with your medical obstacle and how you how you overcame it? Um, I had COVID uh, before, like maybe a month before that that match. Uh, maybe a month and a half before before that show. Um, I had to fight that shit. That shit was a it's a hard deal. Uh, nothing but tea, vitamins. Um, that's about it. Everything stacked up. All the all the symptoms stacked up against me each day. Uh, within uh, a week and a half, I started feeling better, and then I took another test, which stated that I had uh, I was positive for antibodies. And three days after, I took another test, which stated that I was negative. Awesome, awesome. So you would, you know, tell everybody else it definitely is real and you should be safe, right? Um, depending, depending on your, like, yes. But, you know, it hits people differently. Unfortunately, right. I caught, like, kind of like, I caught the worst of it. And, and then uh, I suffer from anxiety, too. So that kind of, like, fucked it up, too, as well. But you're doing good now and we're happy that, you know, you made it through. Correct. I'm glad as well. So how does it how does it feel to be back? How did the match go for you? It went good. I liked it. Uh, I was uh, nervous, a little nervous, haven't been in the ring for a while, but uh, everything went pretty good. Hmm. Which is pretty normal for a pro wrestler, right? After they haven't been in the ring for a while to be nervous. Yeah. Just about, but you know, it, it works for you. Being nervous works for you. Okay, so I'm gonna um, ask you the cliche, and I'm gonna say again for those who just joined us, thank you for being here. And if you have any questions for um, Savage Sham, just write them and we'll answer them. I'm gonna start. Yeah, with she's, a, she just asked me what were your symptoms. Oh, okay. Uh, headache, red eyes, um, insomnia, congestion, mostly everything that you see on Google. All the symptoms you see on Google, that's what I got. That's what I got. Okay. I'm going to start with the cliche question. How did the family take to it? You mean like when he um when he had the COVID? Uh, they were more worried about my mom because my mom had it as well. So we were all worried about my mom. But she um, health issues herself. Uh, she had COVID as well. She had COVID as well. But aside from that, does she suffer from 
Uh, she had, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to say this, I don't know if I'm going to say the pancreatic cancer. Oh my gosh, so yeah, she was high risk. <laughs> Correct. So she fought that and uh, she was, uh, she, you know, she's a strong lady. She's, you know, pure Puerto, uh, Puerto Rican, so, to, you know, COVID ain't shit to her. Right. She's okay now? She's doing better? Yeah, she's negative as well. So, yeah, she's doing really good. But, you know, she's not okay, but she's she's <laughs> negative as well. Yeah. Oh, bless her, though. Bless her. I'm yeah, she, you know what I'm saying? She's doing good. I mean, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with the cliche question, you know. How old was you? How old were you and why wrestling? I was 14. Maybe 13. I'm not sure. I was very young. I was 14. I, I'm going to say 14. You, when you first got into watching it or actually performing it? Cause I, when, I I first start, when I first started when I first started watching it, I was about maybe 8 or 9 years old. Okay. When I got into it, I was 14. Why? Why wrestling? Because you get to become something that you know is is you're come you come close to it's like coming close to becoming a superhero. It's the it's something that comes close to that, so you become something that's more, and an it's a, it's an escape from reality. <laughs> Sophia said, "Did she put Vix on it, Loca?" <laughs> Did she put Vix on? It? I'm gonna put Vix on your face. <laughs> All right. Well, you're pretty sprightly, you know, for a man of your stature. What advice would you give to other wrestlers who may struggle with with that or simply even doubt, doubting themselves because of it? I would tell them don't. Don't, you know, don't have doubt. Uh, give it a shot. Give it a chance. and And go full throttle and go with it. You, uh, you might be surprised on what you do. And what you can be capable of, right? Mm-hmm. Don't, don't underestimate yourself. That's good advice. <clears throat> All right, you started in a tag team, Blood Brothers, back around, what, 2012, 2011? Me and my brother... Uh, Around there, yeah. I would say that around there, around 2012, 2011. Then you were, yeah. You, yeah. Then you were me with the Superstar Whiplash, too. That was my first uh, serious tag team, was with Whiplash. Oh, okay. So it wasn't Blood Brothers first. No. It was me and Whiplash first. Uh, okay. When we started, yeah. It was, yeah, it was me and Whiplash first. So, then later, you know, the infamous GOAT, greatest of all time faction um, formed. And along the way, your brother, who's your actual actual blood brother, um, left for quite a long time. And you did a lot of singles work and stuff like that. So, why the comeback? And what do you guys have planned that you can share with us? Um, the comeback was, uh, well, why the comeback is because I needed uh, closure. I wanted, you know, that was that was a, a dream of ours since we were kids when, uh, like, just me and him becoming a tag team and doing something. Unfortunately, <clears throat> we had other business to attend to. You know, uh, my brother had his uh his work you know what i'm saying which you know stood in the way of a lot of things but you know bills have to get uh, bills have to be paid <clears throat> um but um now that we're together we have a lot of things planned we have uh we want to take over shit real quick and real fast um that's right that's the spirit. <laughs> we we could be, you know, we could be a good tag team. Did I lose you. And one of the best. Oh. Hmm? No, I thought I lost you for a sec. 
You have a question there as well. So. From Mr. Rossini. I am not I am not a gay fish. I am zero percent gay fish. Thank you, Orsini. I appreciate it. <laughs> Orsini's question was can race qualify his level of gay fish? Percentage is maybe sixty seven percent. Is he forty? <laughs> yeah. I'm zero percent gay, gay fish. Gay fish is sim something me and Orsini we you know it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke uh, uh, under the table, you know what I'm saying? All right. Um, Got it from <laughs> South Park. Maddie, Maddie, Maddie loves you. <laughs> Everybody who's joined, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, please write them. Sam, Sam is going to answer them. Okay. So who is your wrestling idol and why? Oh, that's a hard question. That's a good one right there. Oh man! Anyone who you've emulated or uh, uh, I would say I would say Kobashi, Kenta Kobashi. Ooh, nice one. Um, I'm a big new. When I, person, you know? yeah, when I I'm seen them, but you know, when I, when I used to see, like, when I used to, see, I didn't used to watch him. Like I, I played him as the character in video games. I didn't know who he was until. You know, I, I, you know, I watched little videos and I was like, okay, that's his name. And then next thing you know, you know, I've been, you know, I saw stories and who he, who he really was. And I was like, okay, this guy, like this guy, you know, he did a lot of shit. Like he, he fought cancer. He, you know, he, he tag team with the best. He, he did a little, you know, he beat the best. I was like, that's the guy, you know, that's the man that I want to be like, or that's the man I want, you know, that's the man I idolize. When I was little, you know, when I was small, it was like Ultimate Warrior. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought he was a true life superhero. But then, getting older, I was like, oh, okay, you know, there's more people. Not you know, not only WWF. You know, there's people in Japan and there's people in Germany and then there's people. You know, there's people all over the world. But Kenta Kobashi, yeah, he's one of them. He's godlike. That's awesome. Um, who is your favorite Matt says, man, I miss getting my ass handed to me in training by Sam. It was always fun to train with him. I believe I that. appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Hi, Michelle. <clears throat> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you mental. You mental because you're the KOM. <clears throat> if you had to wrestle the winner of King Kong versus Godzilla, who would you fight and how would you win? Yo. I don't know. <laughs> you guys, come on. Wrestling career questions. Let's have some of those. I'll fight the Zilla. I'll fight the Zilla. I don't care. I'll fight him. <laughs> I'll fight him. I don't know how I will win, though. If he does that radioactive shit, yeah. I'm fucked up. That movie looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, True. anyway. <laughs> Getting back to it. I remember the first time. I started looking into your matches before knowing you, and I was super impressed because you literally make it fun and exciting to watch. Straight bulldoze, straight bulldozing through people. What is your favorite match that you've had to date? My favorite match would be. Damn. Came up with a fucking good question. Shit. <laughs> Take your time. Any that stick out for you, like that day was pretty awesome, or maybe it's your favorite person that you are. Why not? I would say I would say Matt Trima. How come? Uh, it was different for me. Um, and I was mo I was uh the most nervous with Matt Trima. Uh, Matt Tremont is a uh, king of the death match. You know what I'm saying? He's he's been bloodied all over the place. Um, to cross over, like to cross over to his world, which I haven't done yet, but you know, I, I just got a little drop. Uh, 
it was different. Okay, fair enough. Is there any match that you have a regrets about? Or wasn't, you know, to your liking? I mean, there's many, but yeah. I would never regret them. <laughs> there's many, yeah, there's many, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't regret them because, you know, I learned from them. Everything's experience. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's absolutely, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Favorite 2KW match. Wow. Um, 2KW. Wow. It's shit. Uh, what, what era? You got to tell me what era. Let's just say any, any. <laughs> Oh, out of all of it. Uh, me, uh, me and Will Black, any match, me and Will Black. Um, Will Black is Yeah, the famous me and Drama Sidal. Um, yeah, just about all. Oh, just about. Because, you know, back then, any match that was, uh, that was 2KW back then was, was one of, you know, my top best memories every, every, every day. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so KW actually, you know, exceeds is pretty infamous. You got a lot of you guys started there, including AEW's uh, Proud and Powerful. But they, you know, they, they did, had a run in 2KW as well. Right. Okay. What is something that you feel like you can improve on? Um, well, I can improve on everything. Everything in the ring, you know, everything in the ring could be improved on. You know, with wrestlers, there's never, there's never there's a perfect. Uh, right? Yeah, there's always room for improvement. You can never be perfect in the ring. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, I'm a little warm in here. So, right, that project heat. It's all good. Having one arm has been a nightmare. Okay. All right. Everybody who just joined, thank you for being here. Please send your questions. We'll answer them. What kind of behavior or actions have you personally been pissed off about in the business or within it? Um, pissed off about, uh, the fact that it changes every day. As far as what? The rules or, uh, advice. A veteran's advice could change every day and, and, it, and it's different from, every, from, uh, from different people, from different veterans is all, veterans is all different. Okay. Can you, can you be a little bit more specific for everybody? Uh, like gear. Uh, some people will tell you gear is important. Others will tell you not. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, as a big man, uh, some people will tell you to do, you know, some people will tell you to do flippity floppity things, but then another will tell you, you know, psychology. It's all psychology. Okay. So... So it's kind of you contradicting. Know, correct. Everything is different. The, the wrestling business changes every day. You know, sometimes you just got to follow you follow your own advice, and and do what you have to do. I. I, I and do what you think. Do what you think is right. Right. Okay. You get a little personal here, for your lady fans. Wow. Are you, are you single? Taken? Um, what do you look for in a counterpart? <laughs> I am taken by God. <laughs> uh. <laughs> buste, I love Jesus. I am a Papa Dios fan. I am this single. Is a question that the lady fans wanted to know. <laughs> I am single. And my preference is... I don't really know. You can't have a beard. You gotta have good teeth. You, 
can't have bad breath. can't have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, AJ Orsini said they wanted Sammy to come off the top. Right. They wanted you to which come I off did, the top, bro. Which I did one time. I did one time. I did that? one time. Uh, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It was against, uh, it, I think it was the Hit Squad and myself versus the PCA. And uh, Mike Law actually put it up. And I, and I gave him a big splash off the top rope. Oh wow! So you liked it, so that means you would do it again in the future. Maybe, maybe. Not I'm open. not sure. Something you would do like sporadically, right? Correct. Yeah, if it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, what match would you not do? A promoter tried to book you. What match is off limits? Oh man. Uh, oh, me against New Jack. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. I saw his I saw his history against fat people. I'm good. You gotta you gotta be specific for the people watching. Oh, Why? all right. So if you Some watch people New don't Jack, even know about wrestling, they're just Oh, here. all right, my bad. If you was to go you know, look it up. New Jack versus Mass <laughs> Transit. You see it. It's bad. I'm not I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need my head cut. I don't need none of that. I don't know. I'm good. Okay. I'm 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 a wrestler. I don't do none of that. Crazy stuff. I mean, hats off to people that do. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's definitely not for everyone. <laughs> right, right. Hats off to people that do. That's much respect to them. Uh, much respect to New Jack as well. But chill. <laughs> not me. <laughs> okay. Word. What makes you worry when it comes to wrestling or feel uncomfortable, if anything? Um, everything. I'm worried all the time. Uh, in wrestling, you know, you have to make the other person look like, uh, you know, look good as you, uh, as well as safety. You have to make sure you don't hurt that person and make sure that person don't hurt you. If you're not worried, then that means you don't care. Right. You know, you, everything should worry you. And I have to have a little bit of trust there, too. Trust comes a big way in, in the wrestling business. You have to have a lot of trust for somebody. So, you know, like I said, everything worries you. You got to worry about the crowd, too. Uh, if a little girl's in front of the stands and you're about, you know, in, in, in the front and you're about to do an outside dive, you got to worry about the guardrail hitting her on her face. Or his face, you know? These are, these are all important things, yeah. Everything should worry you. Can we? Maurice Jones said was good. Was yeah, good. man. Malta, what up, man? Okay. Can we expect some Blood Brothers promos in the future? I want to see you guys like go at it on the mic. Uh, and don't you, for the people watching, you want to see it too? <laughs> Promos, yeah, we, we might do some a little promos here and there, but that's Orsini. You know what I'm saying? Orsini talks for us mostly. We we like per, we like to present action. Okay. Uh, so I like promos. <laughs> right, I like promos, but um, I like short short promos. I don't need to I don't need to speak to I don't need to speak for five minutes to get my point across. If I'm gonna right. fuck you up, I'm gonna fuck you up. That's it. If that's you know that's how me and Gio are. If we're gonna fuck you up and we're gonna tell you, we're gonna fuck you up. If you don't believe us, BMF. that's on you. <laughs> BMF. Yeah. There you go. BMF K O M. <laughs> there you go. Now this isn't it's a typical question, but I feel it's important for other wrestlers or people that suffer from this. Anxiety has been an issue for you. How do you cope with it? <laughs> 
Oh man. Um, anxiety, you know, for some people is bad for others is, you know, it's, it's worse. Uh, Damn, uh, to cope with it, you know, I don't think I, I never really did cope with it. You know, I just, sometimes you just have to fucking, you have to, you have to forget, I guess you have to, you know, with me, I have to forget about it or I have to just keep telling myself I'm normal, I'm normal until it just goes away. But then when it hits you again, you're like, oh shit, you know, you come back to reality and like, oh, like I got this. I forgot I got this. <clears throat> but you know, all it takes is breathing and a lot of, you know, it has to do a lot with the mind. Yeah. Like so. A lot of willpower. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good one. Willpower. So, is you know, it has to do with a lot of uh, talking to yourself and and talking to your self conscience and, and keep telling yourself you're good, you're all right. Uh, so Sophia, he answered those questions already about his least favorite and. Uh, Favorite match? Sophia says, I know I start shaking and crying, forget where I'm at, and wonder how I get home if it ever happens outside. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a tough thing to deal with, and you know, it's not something people normally talk about, but I am certain that other pro wrestlers go through it, and you know, everything. Keeps oh no, um, after, before that. Just shine a little light on that, so you know. No, yeah. Uh, before a match, you know, I've had somebody, you know, one of the guys in the game was like, yo, uh, putting on my boots used to give me a lot of anxiety because, you know, I'll come before a show uh, and I have to be on in an hour. Like showtime's in an hour, so I got to freaking get my gear done and put on these boots. And, and within five minutes, they're like, yo, go to Gorilla. I'm halfway up my boot. Like that shit used to give me like anxiety up the ass and i was just like well what did you do he's like i cut my fucking boot in half i ended up getting short boots i was like that's smart Vito. wow it's all right but you know what i'm saying anxiety gets you but not for nothing you know you learn how to use it if you know what you're doing you know how to use it anxiety could give you a, you know a lot more strength and a lot more uh breath like if you could use it in the ring if you could use it in the ring you know, it's it's a it's a constant adrenaline rush. So if you yeah, could use that in the ring, that. it's kind of like adrenaline. You yeah, if you could use that in the ring, you, you you know you won't get tired. That is excellent advice. Thanks for that. You got a question here. How do you feel about the current state of big men in the business? Um, the current state is actually okay. Uh, the, but there's, you know, like I said, there's a, there's a double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? You have big men who want to jump and show their agility a lot, where you know, like Keith Lee, and then you have other big men who stick to the psychology. Yo, I'm never gonna touch the ground. Like I'm never gonna freaking leave the ground. You know, I'm a giant, so I'm gonna play that way. But it is what it is. You know, like I said, the business evolves. Everything, you know, we have to do shit, more shit for the fans to be like, ooh, ah. Yeah. So, How we can't just stay in one state. <laughs> How, How long have you been in the business and what made you decide to pursue this venture? <laughs> well, like I said, it, you know, it comes close to being becoming no, something. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it comes, it, comes, it comes close to becoming something bigger in life comes to it comes close to becoming a superhero whether you're you're here or face when your face is you know there's no other there's no other better way or better feeling to when you're seeing kids cheer you or if you like being a villain there's no other feeling uh there's no other feeling than when you're seeing somebody boo you so yeah, it means you're over right it's it's a rush <laughs> it's a rush here's all the truth, yeah <laughs> it's a rush Okay. We were able to ask here. We were able to ask your favorite wrestler a question. 
What would it be and who? Damn, I don't speak Japanese though. <laughs> Let's say this was a translator present. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I would ask him I would ask him the same question that Chris that Chris asked me. Like, what do you think about the big men in the business? And what do you think about the future like what what would you know what what would be your take on the future of the business like what do you think it, it'll it'll evolve to what's next what are your thoughts on today's generation of wrestler my thoughts my thoughts of today's wrestler is is uh Man, you know, it is what it is. Like, like I said, you know, you have to fucking, you have to be a crowd pleaser. You know what I'm saying? To make some money in your pocket. Do what you got to do. Um, today's wrestler, you know, I think today's wrestlers are stuck between, between two sides. Listening to people and then listening to others and, you know, you get stuck because you, you're getting two different answers. There are some who follow the psychology and there's some that don't. Yeah, I feel like, um, honestly, uh, this is probably not going to be a popular answer, but I don't care. I'm the BMF. I'll say what I want. I feel like today's wrestler, the passion is different. Not the same because I know that I give my all and I will, for me, to something that I'm truly passionate about, I would want to, you know, do my research and, and do it the, the way that the sport was intended to be. But Correct. I, the passion has definitely changed, you know, and the discipline, I guess, number one. Right. But, you know, how, you know, there's not, there can't be any passion if, you, if you're stuck, if you're confused on what to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could do old school stuff, but... You ain't gonna be seen that way. Yeah, you know I mean, you're gonna be seen in the eyes of veterans. Oh, he's following the old school stuff. But then, somebody, you know, a booker's gonna look at you and be like, "Yeah, but he's not bringing nobody. He's not put, put, telling people to go ooh ah. He's not. He's not putting anybody to be like, you know, he's not putting asses in seats. So why should I book him? I need him to do a 450 splash on somebody to the outside. Or I need him to do a Phoenix splash, and he's 340 pounds. So it's kind of like hard not to have to conform to right make your money and you know correct or make money for the or make money for the booker. I mean, there's other bookers, you know. Thank God that there's bookers that do follow that passion. Like, all right, nigga, if you ain't following old school, then we don't want you. There are bookers that's like that too. So thank God for that. Yeah. Oh. That's a good one. Chris says part of it is because the fans have changed as well. Yeah, I think they're cheaper too. <laughs> there you go. Wrestling fans are assholes and idiots. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm one, but not that type of one. But it's true. What he said is they want. Uh, they just want more. They just want more. They just want more, I, more, I and more. Sometimes it's like you know. This is not the back story. then super kick back then DDT finish super kick finish all right we've been back seeing then, that forgotten finishers who... mattered right so now they like, like okay you do your finisher 50 times and you're still going in a match right but after so, a while they're gonna be like all right we've seen that for a couple of years can you hear something else then you gotta do super kick DDT 450 oh then you do that for a couple of years all right yo we've seen that all right super kick uh brain buster driver uh power driver and then i'm gonna kill you through a table and then i'm gonna do a 450. oh exactly chris just keep going love you too sophia <clears throat> all right do you feel social media has helped kill kayfabe and how important is kayfabe to you kayfabe oh, for those unaware is acknowledging the stage scripted nature of pro wrestling or just uh simply is this slang for protecting the business 
I mean, I mean, if you could use social media for like, if you could use social media right, it could, it could, uh, it, you could use kayfabe, like you could use that into your, into your arsenal. But I don't know. Social media is kind of like for everybody. Like to every, for either you want to put your feelings out there, or yeah. you want to write a journal, whatever you want to do, that's on you. But when it comes to the wrestling business, hey, if it's, if it's killing it, then hey, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Well, However you follow. Do you think? <laughs> Maybe, but then again, then again, like I social media is for of, everybody. Some, some wrestlers get carried away. Like, um, I'm gonna put this out there, Seth Rollins. I used to respect the guy. His social media presence makes me want to punch him in the face. Well, then, not for nothing. You're not for your fans. They shouldn't. They your shouldn't put their wrestling, wrestling character. Fans, and he's they always coming out of character. You know, right, um, but they shouldn't. They defense. shouldn't put they. They shouldn't put their wrestling character in social media. Then, then be yourself. Be be something Lopez. What's his real name? Be be your fucking real name. Don't yeah, be Seth exactly. Rollins on social media. Your personal, but right. as your wrestling persona, you shouldn't be doing shit like that. Like it's so corny. That's the what I mean by kayfabe affecting with social media. The whole thing. Right, right, but then there's others that do both. They they put you know they put their real name and then they put their wrestling persona, which yeah, I mean you could be like yo fuck this guy and then and you get on your other persona, you get on your real life and you're like oh that's my best friend, that's my cool, I'm cool with him. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Do you um do pro wrestlers or you know yourself have any insecurities when it comes to? You know your work, what your craft, what you do. Insecurities, yeah, my weight. Uh, but you know, it takes me to do, to change that. It's part of your wrestling persona, though. If you were to change it, have you thought about that? Like, what would you do? Yeah, yeah, but I'll still fuck people up. That don't that don't matter. <laughs> good, good to know. That don't matter. <laughs> I don't know, if I if I get 150 pounds and you know 120 pounds, then I have something to worry about. That means I'm sick, but <laughs> you know that means I'm sick with something. But if I'm you know if I lose a couple pounds where I'm still big and my shoulders are still wide, I'm still fucking people up. What is your funniest or most in interesting road story? <laughs> funniest and interesting road story. Oh man. Uh either or just the just the one that sticks out there, you're like that time was fucking crazy. <laughs> Damn. Uh shit. When we all drove to Texas and uh Joey Resto almost there? crashed. Oh. Yeah, twenty four hour drive. And Joey Resto coming back. Oh, I think it was PA or Texas, one of those. And Joey Resto coming back almost crashed the car. Oh, we got whiplash here. He said, uh oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this the same story? Go ahead and finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joey Resto almost crashed the car. And he he almost fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, we were driving down. We were driving back down. And we all started bugging. And then there's a few other ones where... I was sleeping in the car where, uh, and these niggas was playing with fireworks. Will Black and Geo and everybody was playing with fireworks, and one of the fireworks went under the car. So oh they screaming, "Get out! Get out!" And I'm there sleeping, like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it was a PA trip. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It was a PA trip. And what happened? Yeah, I fucking end up screaming because these niggas threw fucking fireworks under the car. So then, I, you know, Gio, Gio's telling me, yo, my brother's going to fucking die. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And I see the, the sparkles under the damn car. So I braised down the window. I said, what the <laughs> fuck y'all niggas is doing, man? Yo, that's, oh, that's crazy. Mostly all, all, like, mostly all the crazy stories come from 2KW fucking 2KW wrestlers. We all have fucking crazy road stories. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Those are always the best. Yeah. 
what's something that you don't allow in ring or locker room? <laughs> oh, um, ego. Disrespect. Uh, yeah, those are the two things that's like real big to me. Ego and disrespect. Bully. Don't be a bully. Um, a lot of others, but I think ego, disrespect, and, and being a bully is, is real big to me. If I see you and you acting like your shit don't stink, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> That's right. That's how we do over here. Any hidden talents? I know you're into the music scene as well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rapper, unfortunately. Woo! Yeah, I'm pretty all right. You got to plug in your music over here. No, nah, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. No, 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 no. Working on some stuff? Working on some magic, working on some magic, but it's not It's not yet set ready, you know, it's not ready yet. Um, If a mainstream, I'm actually the same question I asked with Flash. If a mainstream promotion wanted to give you a contract, who would you want that to be and why? New Japan or all Japan. Why? Because I always I was always a fan of Japanese wrestling. And I think they have what it takes to light a fire under my ass. And, and actually fucking so make me bigger. This discipline is definitely spot on. Correct. Like, they'll light a fire under my ass. Especially with, you know, the way they hit you and everything like that. So that should have definitely wake my ass up. I definitely think you, yeah, that'd be awesome. And um, for me, I feel like the New Japan is kind of like when you're going into the military or the army and they whip you into shape and... Right, like, but like, they... they, they the you'll be the press, yeah, but you'll be surprised because, you know, they, they like big people. They'll keep yeah, me fat. They they'll old keep... Old right. They practice everything. Old they'll old keep old. me... They'll keep me big, though. They'll keep... Yo, we like your weight. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn all that shit solid. So you're going to so be a brick wall. Nah. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? But they, they teach Imagine. you all that. Whether you, Yeah, but whether you little or not, they, you know, that's what they're teaching you as well. Sumo, they teach you uh, uh, rappling, uh, uh, catch wrestling, grappling, all that. They teach you everything that's over there so wow. that you know. That's amazing. <clears throat> uh, Whiplash says, stop fronting, bro. Let the people hear it already. Your music. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why are you fronting, Shut up. Yo? I'm not fronting. I'm just don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Are this we, is a little, wrestling. Are we getting worried? Are, do, we, do you get a little anxious about that? What? What? Rapping? About sharing sharing it. <laughs> no, no. I'm just, um, when it comes to music, I'm a perfectionist. Okay. Uh, so I, I wanted, to, I wanted to, and I want it to be a surprise when I do drop it. Okay. Many wrestlers die before the age of 65. More than a few never reach 40 or 30. Even um, the most common form of death is cardiovascul cardiovascular disease. There, because And this is because um, for those who are unfamiliar with wrestling, there is no off season. Uh, the physical nature of the business so I have a great deal of respect for what you guys do. Completely putting yourselves at risk every day or all, all year long. Would you say that is worth it though? And why? Nah, it's not really worth your life. Nothing is worth your life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, like, you know, your whole career, do you feel like it's still worth it that you, you wrestle and this is what you you? chosen to if be. but it I, I would say I would say I would still say if this if my career was life threatening no it's not I mean it could be if you don't know what you're doing it could be yeah or you you if you if you're wrestling somebody who's careless it it could be well, but accidents happen you know yeah accidents accidents does happen but you know if I feel as if that my life is being threatened because of wrestling or just in ring competition, nah, you know, it's not worth it. Fuck all that. 
Okay. I'm trying to live. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> merch. You got any merch coming soon? That, um, yes, I do have merch. Yes, I do have merch. I do have a Blood Brothers t-shirt, which I already put up on Facebook. Um, AJ put up on Facebook as well. The reason why I'm not taking orders is because of these fucking snowstorms that's outside. Right. I'm not going to the post office in the damn snowstorm. I'm sorry. Well, coming soon, though. Coming soon, yes. But everything everything is here already. Everything, you know, everything is good. Everything's in a box. From medium to 5XL. So if you if you're... If your size is dinosaur, I got it. <laughs> That's even more awesome, you guys. He has I got a variety it. of sizes. Um, Eric, my final question for me is going to be your retirement plan. Do you know, you know, when you have it in your head that it's going to be, you're going to put the cap on it? Are you going to go to you can go? My retirement you, plan. What do you want to achieve before then? My retirement plan was to be uh, was to retire with my brother. That that was my retirement plan. So, um, where I want to be, man, that's a tough question because in the future nobody can predict it. No, yeah, but, but like, what would you like to accomplish before that time? Something oh, be a tag, you know, be a tag champ with my brother. Uh, maybe hit Japan one time. You know what I'm saying? Just one time. Before? No. We were never tag champs, no. Oh, wow. So that is something I've been, that you guys I've been tag champs with Whiplash. Uh, I've been tag champs with Joe Borog. Okay. I know Joe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've had single belts before. But never a tag champ with my brother. Okay, so that's something I definitely see happening. Can't wait till that happens for you. <laughs> Guys, I'm um this is about to end. If you have any questions, please send them now. But in the meantime, I just want to thank you for this interview, uh Savage Sam. We all appreciate it. And um I'll be posting it to my YouTube. You can just search BMF Goddess. Um, he's correct. Want, he's correct. You want to uh, in your social medias for everybody? Not really, because I'm a very private person. I don't want to fucking plug in my social media. You, know, like, you guys have a Twitter, don't you? Or YouTube? Yeah, but, you know, I don't really remember. My brain is kind of fried <laughs> up. I'll add that to the, vi to the YouTube video Yes, please. Y yes, please, BMF, please, yeah. Because you know more, you know I'll more than I Mr. do. Mr. Orsini, which yeah. I also, that was a question that I want to ask you before we leave. You guys are being managed by the awesome AJ Orsini. How did that come about? I see you guys. Orsini was a, Orsini was a, well, first comes for, oh, first, uh, Peter, the guy who just commented. Uh, that was a that was an important day for me as well, winning the Ox Baker uh, World Champion. He, you know, he gave me Von Schmidt gave me an opportunity. Uh, he was one of the first people to give me that opportunity to for me to show you know show myself, and I'm glad I'm glad uh, he gave me good advice as well. Uh, yeah, that was very really, that was really important to me as well. So I'm glad that he came you know he came into the uh, my life when he did. He's a real close friend of mine. Um, but Orsini, Orsini been a close friend for a long time. Uh, when Ors, when Orsini came in, and we had the idea when we had the idea when me and my brother was coming back, we already know that me and me and Gio don't we don't do promos. Like I said, if we're gonna do a promo, it's, it's something short. It's just part of your, you know. Right. So we needed somebody to talk. Orsini was not only the person that could talk, but he's you know he's a person that knows us personally. So if he exactly. could talk about us, he he he'll talk about some personal shit that he knows what we about. Right. And we need so we needed somebody like that with chemistry, and uh, the only other person that could do that is Chris. Chris knows us personally. He Orsini and, is the ex goat manager as well. 
<laughs> Correct. Correct. So Amazing. you know he was. That was a good choice. <laughs> right, right. So we we were like, all right, we're gonna get him. Um. Orsini is Orsini is part of the goat. <clears throat> um, like like he said like he said in the comment, you know, the goat never separated. We just ended up doing our own things. Right, right. Yeah, because the goat is still the goat no matter what. Correct. For everybody watching. <laughs> I'm just glad the you know, but now the original four, you know what I'm saying? Now the original four is back right. into play. So, the, right. The infamous right, four. Now, those are right now that you know like the franchise shane douglas called this the go for originals yeah. yes the originals are back into play so everything should be looking real good especially 2021 the year 2021 you know uh it belongs to us oh my gosh imagine um cajun whiplash with uh, with the blood brothers in the ring again that'd be awesome <laughs> it's gonna happen but uh okay. Yeah, there's gonna be plans where, you know, there's gonna be a plan where, where where we all, you know, like I said, 2021 is we all gonna look really really fucking good. So and like I told them, and I told and we all spoke to each other about it. 2021 is our year. This is ours. If if you don't think it's ours, we're gonna take it. As soon as you know things get a little bit back to any kind of normalcy from the COVID, but yeah, definitely. Well, that's you know, yeah, but you know, COVID don't really COVID matters, but that's the thing with the greatest of all time. We're all four of us. You can back us up and against you can back us up against the corner, and that's what we do, even greater. So you could try to take anything from us, but it ain't gonna help you. Damn right. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank have you. a good one. Thank you, Sam. I'll speak to you later.